Hello and welcome to the second of the Reinfused podcasts. Now, this one is several months after the first one. Um, yeah, it's kind of a. Uh, the first one was really rambling and covered quite a lot of topics, and it's unlikely this one's going to be any different. Uh, a few people did reach out and say they wanted to be. Uh, kind of come on and talk as well, which is fine. Uh, that, I think that's probably better because it will keep things a little bit more focused. Um, so yeah, if you do, just reach out and uh, we can arrange something. Um, then in the meantime, in terms of other podcasts, I've been on um, Chinny's podcast, Chinny Vision. Um, good guy. So one of the best in the in the retro community, personally. Um, uh, yeah, he's had a lot of really interesting people on his podcast, and also me. So um, definitely worth checking that one out. Uh, in terms of this one, this one comes at an interesting point. <laughs> so um, you may have some grainy footage of me because I'm just—it's just a podcast. So I'm just using. If there's any footage of me, then uh, it will be the laptop's camera. So yeah, that explains why the quality might not be great, the lip sync might be great, etc. But anyway, um, I digress. Uh, the this comes a few months after I uh, basically sold pretty much my entire collection of retro stuff. Um, it's a tough decision, but uh, it was kind of for safety in terms of finance. It was a, it was the right decision. It was, uh, you know, my, my family has to come first in these things. Uh, a hobby is a hobby. Life is life. So uh, it was the right thing to do. It was no less painful than being the right thing to do, of course, because of course it is. Uh, you done something for as long as I have with my collection built up as long as I have it's always going to be tough getting rid of it all uh, but I've done you know I've done small sales here and there I've, where I've had stuff in my cupboard for so long that it's like whatever well, it says it was going to rot and so you sell it on and it's tough to get rid of anything like that you, you get an attachment to these things um, which isn't good obviously it's not good it's, they're just things but um, yeah so Nerdhaven as I look around it now is I want to say empty. We got to that one in a minute, uh, but much emptier. Like the shelving, which had machines on every single shelf surrounding me here, they're all well, certainly that side mostly empty. Those bits over there are all empty, and over here is less empty now. Um, the the top of the shelves here, where you can kind of see the stacks, they're still pretty full because this was all of the parts and everything and engineering side of things and whilst the the guy who bought it all because the, the the sale was um it was uh, nine thousand uh, pounds i didn't get that I, he knocked me down a little bit uh but it was basically the room everything in the room could just go any any bit of it the the tools everything um and he took some of that stuff he took some of the tools and some of the parts but he was really a collector more than a uh, more than a guy who fixes stuff he tends to send stuff off to get fixed so uh, he didn't buy a lot of that but he did take the tools he did take um, my bench power supply and things like that uh, which yeah, made sense uh, it's stuff he probably could have sold sell on as well if he wants to uh, interesting nice guy as well um, he <laughs> obviously he paid a lot of money for, for this stuff uh, but didn't fully realise what that meant I think Um and so he, he asked me first, he sent a message saying, oh, okay, will I just be able to um, you know, just bring a normal van up and just collect this stuff? And I said, no, you're going to need something much bigger than a van. And yeah, he came in like on the kind of the mini, the big van truck things. And that was over half full when he left. So yeah, he would have taken like three or four of the, the, the kind of transit van style things to, to actually uh, take it out in the end. But yeah, uh, I think... By the time we'd finished packing it, and I really feel really bad because I was suffering from an in ear thing, and I still am. It's not as bad, but it was quite bad then. And so, if I moved around too much, I just felt dizzy and nauseous, and so I had to keep lying down whilst my wife Erica and him basically put this stuff in the van. I got quite bad for that. But by the time he'd done it and he was going off, you could just see on his face was the look of I have to take this van home with all of this stuff to my wife who probably thinks I'm just getting a few computers and uh, and explain that I've got basically a whole house's worth of stuff to put in. 
<laughs> he seems to be having fun though. He's talk- he's contacted me a couple of times, asked me some questions, and he does seem to be having a lot of fun with the stuff, which is great. Um, and it's good as though that stuff is being is being like enjoyed. Uh, you know, absolutely. He'll sell some of the stuff on. He he will. I mean, it's there's too much, and there's stuff that he's not going to be interested in, and things like that. But yeah, in terms of what's left, so he left a lot of the the, the kind of parts and stuff. So this all these like stacked parts and things and bits and bobbins and the whole shelf of parts up here. Um, as I looked around the house after the sale, uh, because obviously I've been doing this for I can't remember how much it is. I mean, my book when I wrote my book, I started writing my book. I've been doing it for a couple of years already. The book I did 15 years later. So it must be near 20 years now, 20 odd years that I've been collecting. Pardon me. Um, so the stuff builds up and it kind of migrates around the house as well. And so after it, we were finding up more stuff as after the guy gone. So I've got like the whole boxed MSX2 that that wasn't in the in the cell, and uh, there's a Spectrum that wasn't in there, and um, a couple of other things as well that didn't didn't go in. They weren't listed either because I didn't see them, so they weren't actually on the listing anyway. Um, but he like he didn't take. There's like a mini server PC over there. He didn't take. He didn't take the doggy PC, which if you watch the videos on my channel. I started tearing that apart recently and I'm doing the second part of that soon. Um, which is good because it means I could do the video on that, which was was, was great. But I had a video to do. Um, and yeah, there's lots of bits and bobs and I've ended up buying some more stuff. Of course, I have buying some more stuff. Uh, but a much lower key than last time. Well, it has to be a lower key than last time. The last time I, I bought um, all this stuff before this bubble was in was in play so all i bought i bought a lot of the stuff for way cheaper than you get it now there are stuff that i would never be able to replace because I just will not be able to afford to so um yeah so I, I, people did ask if i made a profit on this as well uh difficult to say i suspect yes and i suspect that because uh some of the stuff that he he took because I, I worked basically, I got what the 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 kind of the the median eBay sold price was. Yeah, this is a mistake a lot of people are selling stuff and would make where they just look for what they're listed at. No, I took the median sold price and I used that as my base for what these different items were worth, which I think is fair enough. I didn't go for the highest price. Uh, I didn't go for the lowest price. I went in the middle. Uh, but obviously, those prices have migrated up quite a lot since I started doing this so uh, i imagine that he got a bargain absolutely uh but i also imagine that i have made a slight profit in terms of what i paid out for this stuff originally just because i was collecting early enough that the prices weren't ridiculous like um getting like neo geos for 40 quid and stuff like that uh so yeah so yeah i so i've been doing small auctions and uh, i recently won one which had a Commodore 3000H, which was their Pong, what well, their second Pong machine, I think it was, uh, in it, uh, a Mega Drive, uh, which looks like it's a Hong Kong import, and a, uh, what I actually did the auction for, a BBC Master, because I did miss having a BBC, so I miss all of them, I miss having a BBC. Um, so I got a Master now, works great, had to do the bat, fix the battery, obviously, and, and do the settings, and, the smell me it suggests that the power supply uh, reefers are probably going to go. I've not changed them yet, but I imagine they are going. So I do really, I do still have a kit which was left here as well because I obviously have had quite a few BBC machines over time, so I had a couple of kits lying around. Uh, so I will do those <laughs> when uh, when the time comes. Um, I'll leave them for now. Hey, maybe I'll survive. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so interesting times i found other stuff to do i've got uh i've did a, a couple of projects already uh i'm building a lot of stuff again so my head is back in the point where i can i'm doing projects again which is which is good um i've got a big project coming soon as of today there's a chance depending on the, if the dice fall correctly that i'll be doing it this weekend i'll be filming it this weekend the patrons will get it on sunday if it all works out correctly um and that's another fun build uh pointless build i love doing pointless builds 
Uh, but uh, it's a fun one, uh, and I think uh, I think it'll be good. So yeah, hopefully this weekend that'll be out for patrons, and obviously the week after out for everyone. Um, and yeah, it's it's kind of uh, it's fun times. It's still good. <laughs> I'm still finding stuff to do, and I still want to make videos as well. Um, I wanted to do the second part of the doggy video like last week before last, last week before last, um, but I was missing something. I couldn't. I I couldn't do it. Um, and because I really wanted to make a video at that point, I made one about making an Amstrad out of like an Android laptop, which is what I planned to do, but I hadn't planned to do it this early. But I did it uh, just because I wanted to make a video. And that was kind of a, that was a, a tongue in cheek one because um, uh, I kind of despise quite a lot of the people in the <laughs> that are making the kind of star mini consoles. Uh, well, no, that's not fair. I despise one company that's doing it. Um, and so uh, it was kind of my. With all the, a lot of the YouTube channels are in bed with them, and they're and they're hyping up, making videos about this uh, the machine coming out and and things, and uh, that was kind of my way of just saying, yeah, you're kind of pegging yourself to not a great company there, guys. But hey, whatever gets views, right? Um, yeah. Uh, so I guess the videos are still going to happen. The um, It'll be less of the obscure stuff now, obviously, because I don't have it anymore. All the obscure stuff is gone. I have made videos about quite a lot of it, so it's not so bad. I have documented a lot of that stuff now. Um, there wasn't much left to make. Uh, so maybe it was you know, maybe it was the best time to, to actually end up selling it all. <laughs> if you want to look it off from a bright side, I, uh, I told a lot of the stories, which is what I really... It's what I wanted to do. This is kind of... It's where the book, where Game from the Obscure, in the Obscure came from. It's where the channel came from is because I wanted to tell these stories and I think I've done it now. Um, oh, somebody asked me about the yesterday game. So the yesterday game, if you don't know, is a documentary that I, I started making quite a while ago uh, about retro collectors and the hobby and uh, why people do it, etc., etc., etc. I mean, the first, you know, kind of the first episode of this podcast was in a similar vein. It's something that fascinates me. It, everyone has a slightly different, but it's all a uh, reason why they do it. It's all interconnected in, in a way, because it's as hobbies tend to be. Um, it's still happening. It was delayed because as I started to make that, that was the point when I was made redundant for my last job. And uh, Basically, yeah, <laughs> everything went out the window and it was a scramble to try to find a job and stuff. And um, and it kind of continued because the job I got after that was not feeling particularly safe. Um, as IT jobs at the moment just appear to be, unfortunately, is, is kind of the way it is. Uh, but it will happen. I've got all of the people that, that gave me um, uh, VOD to, to include. It, I've still got all that. It's all safe. Um I've got to do my bits and the linking parts and kind of uh, and put it all together, but it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's a it's an interesting documentary to make, uh, and it's the kind of thing that kind of Rogue Gunners does, uh, and obviously it's the it's one of the things that links up Rogue Gunners and Reinfuse, my two companies together. So it will happen. <laughs> it's just uh, it's taking a little while, but yeah, it's uh, thanks to everyone that was involved in it. Uh, I wish I'd got it done faster, but it is going to happen. It's, it's not. All that time wasn't wasted. It's going to happen. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's kind of... It's an odd time. It's interesting time. It's a uh, terrifying time in the world. So it's, you know, it's good to have something to forget <laughs> about that stuff. I remember um, we're all kind of just humans, just getting stuff done. Um, so what... Uh, What's next, I guess? Again, obviously, the obscure stuff is less likely. I'm not, not unlikely. I, I imagine I still will be able to get hold of some stuff at some point. But again, I, I'm not buying loads anymore. It's not like at the height of this. I was getting boxes from Japan like every week. Uh, that won't be happening again. Absolutely. Um, I will be 
getting very small number of items because we do have to save money and we make films as well. We have to save up for films. I've just spent £1,100 on a camera, which in terms of a film camera is chicken feed. In terms of a small production company like Rogue Gunners, it's a lot. <laughs> so uh, we kind of have, we have to... Yeah, it's, it's a balancing act with the finances uh, and uh, reinfused, unfortunately, is very much on the low end of that or of that act or that balancing act so um there won't be as much but i get a few things i i always try to find interesting items that nobody bothers as bothered covering uh because uh, i think that's that's more interesting to me uh, unless i think someone has left stuff out on something and then I, i'll cover it then but it's more interesting the stuff that nobody bothers to cover just because hey it's all got story so it should be covered but um yeah it's uh, there is yeah stuff that's annoying me <laughs> i've already talked about the um the, the plague on the retro community with one of particular company but um i've did i have noticed as well that and it's not recent it's it's been happening for a while but it's getting worse is that um the retro community is now falling kind of prey to the to the the, the kind of um uh anything for for clout uh prograder people where they'll just just say stuff that they know are going to get people reacting to it just so they can get views and stuff like that um yeah i don't like it it's if you've got something valid to say then then, then just say it if you don't then well, I mean, what? Why is that attention important? Really, it's uh, every video I've made. I think it's safe to say every video I've made, I made because there was a point for making it. Uh, it wasn't to get myself clout. I mean, I think everyone realizes I'm not good at that. Um, it was because I there was something that I wanted to show off, or something I wanted to say. So I don't understand this kind of this mentality of of just posting pictures of yourself with inane questions. Just so people will retweet it and well, we skeet. I think they're calling blue skies. I don't say that one. Um, and then just you know, because you know you'll get a response. It just it's weird. If you've got something important to say, then just say it and you know, be damned. Other than that, I mean, I do the the retro rebus thing occasionally, but that's some fun. I mean, that's I think that's that's something fun. People seem to enjoy it, and I quite enjoy making them. So uh, there's a reason for that. But anyway. Yeah, it annoys me, and I know it's because I'm an old man, and it's, <laughs> it's it's old man shouting at the clouds. But it's yeah, I don't like it at all, and it's um, it just seems a waste of a waste of people's time, especially the people doing it. Uh yeah, the whole social media thing is it's kind of. Mm, I left Twitter a long time ago because I didn't like the people involved with it or how it was um it was going and that's just got worse um i kind of moved to mastodon first or to the fediverse first uh and i've now also have a a blue sky account as well i use them about equally i'm still not entirely sure about blue sky because it's it's funded by very similar people to, that were funding twitter they don't make a big announcement of that either but if you look it's all it's crypto bros and what have you that are behind the funding for that so at some point they're gonna have to try to make money and there's only one way to make money on social media and that's advertising and if you want to make real money on advertising you have to sell customers details because that's what manufacturers and and uh sellers want they want personal details so they can try to reach out to people to get them to buy stuff so that worries me that's much less risk on the Fediverse because if you don't like a server, you can kind of up sticks and move to another one or you can spin your own one out. That's what I did with Retro Chat, which um, obviously when I was made redundant, I had to, to well, I was going to close that one, but uh, a really nice guy took over it instead. And that's still going strong. Um, but yeah, it worries me. I mean, I tried also Freds as well, but Freds is just awful. It's, it's fast tracking its way to Twitter and not Twitter when it was kind of good. But Twitter now, and it's getting there very quickly as well. When you look at the kind of things that are being posted and a lot of this disinformation and what have you that's turning up on there, um, 
that's dangerous and it's um it's getting worse quickly and let's be honest facebook has no reason to stop that uh they're getting lots of eyes on they're getting advertising in there why would they bother stopping that because it, it works they won't stop it until somebody basically causes them to lose more money than they're gaining uh then they'll crack down but until then they won't so yeah uh, i'm not sure about blue sky we'll see uh maybe they won't maybe they'll escape that hole but i don't see how if they've got investors and the kind of investors that expect um something in return and crypto bros absolutely do uh then they're going to need to do something and yeah yeah I, I, it's got to come at some point I, I don't see how or not they've added things like videos and stuff and that's all that all takes space that all takes uh money so they have to fund it somehow and i, I think advertising is coming um it will be whether they can make advertising work without infringing on their users uh rights that's going to be the the crux if they can do that if they can bring advertising in uh, and it not not end up selling all their users information then they'll kind of crack the code and i think that's the way to be you, you just you have to accept advertising at some point on these big services except things like the fediverse which works differently um but you know there, there are ways of doing advertising where you don't cause more of a problem than you solve for yourself if you will and yeah it, it, we'll just see if they if they manage to make that out <sighs> yeah <laughs> we've kind of gone everywhere haven't we it's um it's a weird thing it's just that the the retro community as a whole doesn't feel healthy at the moment it's for a very long time the retro community avoided a lot of the nonsense that the other communities were involved in and i see we're getting that now we're getting youtubers advertising stuff that isn't good youtubers absolutely doing paid advertisements without really saying they're paid and that's definitely a no-no uh i mean me i did those um those kind of those mega engine things uh, uh made by pce works and they weren't sponsored they sent me the things but just because they were interested in the thing i made uh, and they wanted to uh, the rp engine um, project and they just said hey we'll take a look at ours as you'll see we solve things quite similarly in other ways and we did these things as you could compare them so they didn't want me to make a video they didn't care about me making a video they just wanted they were just engineers sharing with engineers um but i still announced that i got them for free in the thing i still added paid advertising notice on there even though it wasn't um because it was the right thing to do and i've seen a couple of youtubers now uh people i trusted as well which have done adverts for companies like timu which are blatantly adverts uh because they are hyping up things that are quite plainly shit <laughs> and absolutely and totally crap uh, and they are making them sound well then one of them making them kind of uh talking about the very few positives compared to the and ignoring all the obviously and blatant negatives that is not a review <laughs> that is not you buying stuff that is you trying to sell a product and if you're doing that you are advertising and you should be telling people you're advertising um and yeah that's happened with a couple of youtubers and it's not the right way of doing things i don't think so i'm not some kind of moral paragon here i'm not the grand paladin of the <laughs> of a retro community just a guy but there's there's got to be a limit right there's got to be a level where everyone just kind of says this just just isn't right it's not that you're being too um purist it's that this just isn't right and that can't be right i don't feel it is i know that's how advertising is supposed to work you're supposed to sell but when people don't realize you're selling it's kind of the key and i used to work in sales i understand all this stuff but there have to be limits on these things you have to have there's a burden of trust especially when you're a youtuber because you have a community and when you have a community you have a burden of trust and if you break that burden of trust then you've stepped over a line i just think you do and it's i'm sure there's a lot of people who disagree with me uh, there's a lot of fans of my channel's tiny it's got very very few actual people that regularly view it um 
I adore every single one of you that view my, my videos. It's I always find I still find it astonishing when I, when I get like any amount of people watching what I what I do. But um, and so I almost certainly as I as I did when I mentioned it on some of the social media platforms, I'll, I'll get backlash from people. But it's my opinion. <laughs> it's uh, and I I can't believe that there aren't people that don't agree with me on that. I mean I know at least a few people do because I didn't just get bad. Um, pushback on that one it's you know there's this burden it's a burden of trust it is a burden of trust if you have a community you have that and you have to respect that and those videos did not respect that at all um yeah anyway <laughs> this video is uh is verging onto the political so let's uh Let's cap it off now. Again, if you are interested in coming on just talking about stuff, preferably, I guess, retro-based things, but we can talk about all sorts of stuff. We can talk about music. We can talk about um, game development. Obviously, I, I, I do some... I dabble in game development. I'm rubbish, but I do some. Uh, so, uh, absolutely, we can talk about that. Uh, just machines. You want to come on with a special love for a machine? absolutely fine you just want to talk about stuff you want to come in and tell me i'm wrong about things great come on we'll we'll debate it no problem <laughs> uh just let me know uh you know where to, where to contact me i'm sure and uh yeah have a great day everyone see you next time